Greetings. Tonight I took one man show to the campus of Case Western Reserve University. With the help of Sports Information Director Craig Yance, I was able to schedule three nice guests. Head Coach Craig Debelak, Assistant Coach Marcus McCullough, and former Brexville High School standout football player David Kalavig, who set many records already for the Spartan football team here at Case Western. Sit back and enjoy. We are about to enter the arena of Division III college football from Case Western Reserve University. One man show starts now. I have David Kelevig waiting to talk with me inside the Veal Center here on the campus of Case Western. David is a former Brexville High School football standout, now a football star at Case Western, where he holds numerous receiving records. Let's go inside and talk with David. Each and every year we try to preview a lot of the Northeast Ohio colleges and the players that used to uh, patrol the fields and the courts, both men's and women's, at the high school level in our, our TV audience area. Tonight we have uh, David Kelevig with us from Brexville Broadview Heights High School, used to play for the Bees. How big of a man on campus were you back in high school? Were you the man, the football star? Oh, we were, we were a tight senior class, but I, I played football sophomore through senior year. I played basketball junior, senior year, and I played baseball sophomore through senior year. So I, it wasn't just football. I, I, I played all of them. So it was, it was a lot of fun back then. How many letters did you earn when you were in high school? Sounds like you were up to about eight, nine, maybe ten letters. Oh, yeah, just eight letters. Yeah, it was... It was it was it was intense switching back and forth, getting getting to football shape, then basketball shape, then baseball shape, and having to relearn how to do everything every year. But I don't know it was just it was good competition. It was a lot of fun. I I really like playing all the sports. Now, when you were a boy growing up and you first started playing sports, did you ever think that you would do that well at the high school level? Well, well it was just I never really looked at like high school as like me ever being there when I was a little kid. I would just always go in and like admire the. The, the varsity like basketball team or football team and just see them in the lights and think it was all great and everything. But I, I never really imagined myself being there. I just was in marvel over the older guys. We're speaking with David Kelevig, a former Brexville Broadview Heights football player, now a football player for Case Western Reserve University. What brought you to Case? You probably had your choice of a couple of small colleges or, or a lot of colleges maybe that you could have went to. Well, I, um, it's just the academics here. It's just outstanding. It's the best school in Ohio. And I really wanted to, I wanted to play football, but I wanted to get the best education I possibly could. And I mean, Case Western Reserve is the best school. If I stayed in Ohio, I was doing it. It was between here and a bunch of Ivy League schools. Or maybe in, and so I, I just, I, I just kind of want to stay in the state and go, go to the best school I could. Now, folks, I'm about six one and three quarter, and you're a little bit bigger than me sitting here in the chair. How what, how big are you physically, and then how much did you have to bulk up even to play college football here at Case? Well, I'm uh, I'm six three right now. I've been six three for a long time, but um, I put on about twenty pounds, twenty five pounds since I came to Case, and uh, it's just a lot of hard work in the weight room and on the track. I see here statistically last season you were second on the team in receiving and scoring. You had 71 yards receiving. You had five touchdowns. What was it like to score your first touchdown at Case? Uh, first touchdown was nice. It, was, it came my freshman year in the first game I ever played. And it wasn't really the first touchdown that really like, let me know. It was the first catch I had. It was like the second play of the game. A little slant over the middle. I caught the ball and got leveled. And it really, really let me know that, listen, you're like, you're not the little kid anymore. You're not the little kid, little freshman, 18-year-old going up against 21-year-olds. You're not the little kid, but, and you can really play with these guys. Also, statistically, I see that um, you had quite a few accomplishments also as an underclassman. Was that part of the system that Joe Perella brought in here or that you came into? And how much will the system change at all now that you have a new head coach this season? Well, it, that team, the, my sophomore year, was just unbelievable. We led the nation in passing yards, and we were just, it was just a very good offense, and we really gelled together as a group, and we worked hard together as a group, and it was it was really great experience, and I, honestly, it's going to determine this year with the new coach. I mean, the system's not really going to change. Coach Debs was the offensive coordinator then, so, I mean, I, I'm not anticipating the system or the plays changing. It's just how hard we work, and how well we work together, really, as a team. 
You know what impresses me the most here, um, David, are, are some of the current records you hold, and I see you're glancing at the sheet here as well. Most pass receptions in a season, 61. David also has the most net receiving yardage in a season, 1,039. He set that a couple of years back. And most touchdown receptions in a season at 12. You have to be closing in maybe on the all-time touchdown career mark for receivers here at Case. Yeah, it's it's I'm closing in on it pretty soon here. Uh, hopefully this next year, but I mean a lot determines on that. It's a lot who our quarterback's going to be. Who we lost a lot of guys to graduation, so it's really going to be a lot of hard work this year if I'm going to attain anything close to that. Education. You mentioned you came to play football here at Case because of the academics. You know, we talked. Yeah, you know, we we talked a couple of minutes ago about the transition from maybe high school to college for football. What's it like in the classroom? Oh. I mean, I can't imagine what it must be like to, to come here and to, to take maybe your, your first week of classes at Case. It has to be intense. Yeah, well, I mean, Brexley, they, they prepare you real well. I mean, it's one of the best public schools around. But I, it's just night and day coming to Case, which is real top-notch private school, and best in the like, most strenuous academics in the nation, it's just, or in the state. It's just you really got to buckle down. You got to make priorities, and you got to – decide whether you're going to study or you, you're going to do other things and for me it's study right now so and that's what I came here to do. Let me ask you this toughest opponent when you played for Brexville year in and year out and toughest opponent now that you've experienced while you're playing at Case Western? Oh it's Strongsville by far I mean really? yeah. give me a break but uh, yeah. There oh are. wait a minute how about Medina and how about Brunswick? Well we, we had Brunswick's number my 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 class we <laughs> oh, nice. they weren't we didn't really worry about them, but it, it, it was always strong. So it was just us and them battling every year since eighth grade to senior year. It was just us one two against them. So it, it was Brandon Murphy and Tom Check and the whole crew of them. It was just yeah, they were they were our rivals definitely. So I know you probably remember your first hit at varsity practice. How about your first hit in a college football game? Did it sting just a little bit more than you thought it would, or were you physically prepared through the preseason conditioning and everything to absorb that first hit? Were there any surprises there? No. My, my teammates let me know how college is going to be like the first practice when I, I'd start running my mouth at practice, and oh. they, they, they'd oh. shut it for me real quick. But, I mean, they, they, they got me ready, like, juiced up, ready to go in the game. I knew what I was in for, really. What piece of advice do you have, David? And we're, we're speaking with David Kelovic, uh, former Brexville Broadview Heights football player, now a star receiver for Case Western Reserve University. Young people out there thinking about college, you know, maybe even mixing athletics and academics. What advice do you have for them, everybody out there in the TV audience tonight? Well, the first thing I would do is I just I wouldn't limit my options to one sport or one academic area or anything like that. I mean, I played three sports. I like to study economics, business, history, art, history, like music. I just don't limit yourself to one specific area and don't limit yourself to one specific field because really you, you can you end up going to college, you take a class and you could end up liking one thing that you would really never like before. So I mean just keep your options open, have fun while it lasts in high school and, and just get ready to work hard. Some very interesting insight here this evening with David Kelovig, the star receiver. One of the receivers are going to comprise the Case Western Reserve University offense this fall. Um, who do you hang out with here on campus? Do you have anybody from high school that maybe came here as well, or did you have to make a whole group of new friends, or do you still hang with the old friends back, back home? Well, I, I still hang out with all my old friends from back home, but I have a buddy who lives down the street from me that I've been friends with since third grade since I moved to Brexville, and he came to Case too, and we still hang out a lot. He's, he's a real smart guy. And, yeah, but, I mean, I made a whole new, gr new group of friends, and we live together here, and, and it's a fun time. Excellent. Thank you for joining us this evening on One Man Show, David. David Kalavig, one of the top receivers in Northeast Ohio for college football, and on his way to maybe set and establish a few more records at Case Western Reserve University. Well, that was certainly interesting. We talked with David Kalavig, who owns a couple of different records in the Case Western Reserve University uh, football stat book, and one day maybe in the, the media guide. And one of the men that were responsible for the past two years' success here at Case Western Reserve um, joins me now, Marcus McCullough. 
you're an assistant coach now in your fourth season, and uh, you were telling me before we started taping here that uh, Joe Perella brought you in. Yes, that's correct. Um, I was actually down in uh, Gambier, Ohio at Kenyon, Uni Kenyon College, and uh, I had known Joe for a few years when I worked with him over at John Carroll University, and when he got hired here, he called me up the same day and told me that there was a job here available, so I jumped on board being from uh, Northeast Ohio, growing up in North Olmsted, uh, in that area really got me back to my roots. We're going to slide you over here a little bit, get you on TV, because you never know, your next big break could be weekend sports on Channel 5. <laughs> you know, North Olmsted, you, you were telling me, I think, too, before we went on, that you played with Rich Firmals. Share, share with the, the viewers the, um, the story about the letters when the, the colleges started calling and a little bit of the gap as far as football interest between you and Rich. Well, Rich was a Division I recruit getting uh, letters from all over the nation, and uh, I ended up at Baldwin-Wallace College, and any time that he would get a letter from one of the major universities, uh, he'd tend to throw it at the bottom of our locker, and i go, aren't you going to be opening that? And he goes, no, I really don't want to go there. And, uh, you know, for me, I was opening up any letter, uh, filling out any questionnaire that I could get my hands on, and uh, Rich ended up going to Ohio State and had a great career there, but uh, it seems kind of funny that... Uh, you know, he'd see letters from Notre Dame, USC, and places like that, and he just didn't want to have anything to do with them. He was born and raised a Buckeye, and uh, we were glad to see him go there. Excellent. You were also telling me that uh, your older brother d dated Denise DeFala? Oh, that was back in, like, seventh grade, so who won't go <laughs> Well, it's always neat to know that we've all had our 15 minutes of fame. Let's talk about fame here with this football program. You graduate one of the top quarterbacks in the country a year ago. Joe Perella moves on to become the athletic director at Beachwood High School. How much will this affect the program? Are you guys going to miss a beat at all? Because Greg Debelak steps in. He was the offensive coordinator. He's now the head coach. Is the engine just going to reload? I believe it's going to reload. Greg is... Uh waited uh, anxiously to take over this program. He's uh, been primed and ready for the last few years being the offensive coordinator here and uh, taking over for Coach Perello when he was over at John Carroll University. So, you know, we're anxiously chomping at the bit to get on the football field, and uh, we have a great nucleus of players coming back, and we also have a great incoming freshman class. So we're, we're very excited about the upcoming season. Who are some of the top names in that freshman class? That, and will any of them get a chance to contribute at the varsity level this season? Well, the three years that we've been here, we've had a number of freshmen that do compete and, and end up playing for us. So uh, I don't see it being a different story for us. We're, we're in the business of winning football games, and we're going to play the best 11 um, on both offense, defense, and on special teams. So we're, you know, we're, we're looking forward to them to contribute early, and that's how it's always been uh, since we've come here three years ago going into our fourth season. And many of you at home may not know this, but uh, the Spartans – are redoing the football field. You're going to have a nice new facility to play football in in 2005. How much of a difference will that make for the football program here for the Spartans? It will make a big difference for our, our program, but I think it's just going to do have a big effect on the university in whole. It's uh, actually part of a $126 million project that's going to, uh, uh, part of the, the project is uh, brand new dormitories that are going to surround the field. So it's not only going to enhance our football program, but it's going to enhance the entire campus life as well. So we're, we're, we're definitely excited about it. Uh, you know, we will be playing our home football games out at Brush High School this year. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of to do that, but when you look at what's the end result in that new stadium and the new project, uh, it'll be worth the wait. Well, you played high school football. Do you think there's any chance we might see a playoff game at this new facility? It's always kind of nice when a college can host, you know, a first or second round or even a semifinal game at the high school level here in Ohio because it brings so many people in to see the campus and to see the football facilities. I think it would. Uh, being a multi-purpose field, it's going to have a field turf surface on there. Uh, so we're hoping that, you know, that will attract some of the, the high school teams to come in and, and play and be a part of, a, you know, the great tradition of high school football here in northeast Ohio. You're an assistant right now. Do you have designs on being a head coach one day? Yes, I do. Um, I'm going to take it, uh, you know, work my way up. Um, I've been promoted to associate head football coach by Coach Debelak, and, uh, you know, I'm willing to put my time in, and, and it's got to be a right situation, too. You just don't want to jump at anything just to become a head coach. It's got to be a good fit for you, you and the school, whether it's high school or at the college level. So you just want to pick and choose your jobs properly. So, um, you know, it works out best for everybody, uh, the university and you as, as a person as well. Teams on this year's schedule, who are some of the tough games, and do you know when homecoming is this season? 
Uh, I'm not sure where homecoming is. It's going to be, it's, I know it's definitely going to be a brush high school. Um, you know, you're looking at our, our conference is always very tough. Uh, you got Washington University in St. Louis and Carnegie Mellon over in Pittsburgh. Uh, we do play Worcester every year uh, as a non-conference game, and they got Tony Sutton coming back, one of the best uh, running backs in, in the nation. So, you know, week in and week out, you can't underestimate anybody. Uh, Kenyon College has a new coaching staff over there that will be new to us. Uh, they've been there for one year, and Jeff Ramsey over at Oberlin has done a nice job uh, with their success that they had last year. So you just can't take anybody for granted. You've got to prepare for them like you're playing the best team in the country, and that's the mindset that we have and that our players will have. Okay, now it's time for you to make the the people at the executive level here at the college happy. I'm going to give you a chance to tell everybody out there why Case could be an academic alternative for them to continue their higher learning. What makes Case uh, a little bit better than the next college, all colleges being equal? Location. Uh, you're looking at uh, Case being at one of in one of the ni nicest areas of, of Cleveland. It's got a rich tradition, uh, both um, economically and as well as when it comes to uh, the performing arts and the cultural activities that enhance uh, Case through University Circle. Uh, year in and year out, it's producing great students that are going on and doing bigger and better things. Oh yeah, that um, alumni list is impressive. It definitely is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just if you look at the national rankings that, that Case is on, it's, it's one of the top universities in the country. Uh, it's got world-renowned recognition. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is keep promoting that. And, and really, for us, we need to recruit in our own backyard because there's a lot of people that don't know the power of this university and what impact it can have on a young man or woman's life. And we need to, you know, keep forging ahead, ahead and recruiting great student athletes to uh, produce great workers and, and scientists and doctors and engineers. Did you ever think you would be an assistant football coach at Case Western Reserve University here on the Spartan staff 15 years ago when you were in high school? Uh, not at all. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 15 or 15 years ago. Um, and it's, it's been a great opportunity. I love it here. Uh, working for Greg and other coaches has been an outstanding sit, uh, situation for me. I'm back here in Cleveland, which uh, I've been born and raised, and so, are, so is my wife from this area. So it's really nice to get back uh, to Cleveland and uh, be able to do something that I love, and that's to coach football. Uh, you know, it's a great career. A lot of people are envious of college football coaches because they get to do something that they truly love and still be a part of a game that, you know, they've played and I've played for such a long time. So it's, it's, it's been a blessing for me to be here. And I don't think I touched upon this, but let me ask you this. Um, what positions do you actually work with as an assistant coach? Are you over the position coaches themselves? We didn't get a chance to touch base on that. Well, I'm the associate head football coach, but uh, my areas that I coach are defensive backfield, and I'm also our special teams coordinator. So uh, once, when you're in this type of arena, you wear many hats. I'm also the strength and conditioning coach, or head of our strength and conditioning program. So, um, you know, I wear many different hats, and I'm willing to take on any tasks that uh, Coach Debelak asked me to do. We're speaking with Marcus McCalla of um, Case Western Reserve University. He's on the Spartans football staff. One day, perhaps, a head football coach. What's the hardest thing, and this will be our last question, up. what's the hardest thing for you to juggle time-wise? Um, I believe you're married, correct? correct? Yeah. What's the hardest thing for you time-wise to, to being a coach? Because we know that you, you spend a lot of hours, you look at film, you work with players, you're always working with a head coach, and even during the off-season you have to do stuff with a football team to always promote the program. Uh, this, this business, is it's 12 months out of the year. Uh, you know, we're definitely putting in about 75, 80 hours a week. We work seven wow. days a week during... Uh, You're not getting overtime for that either. That is, that is correct. So we are, you know, definitely putting in our time. But, uh, you know, you, you've, you've done it for so long, it just becomes natural. It's second nature for you to put in all these hours. Uh, you definitely want to have a, a family and a, and a spouse that's very understanding. You just can't, uh, you know... You have to have somebody that understands what you're doing and the kind time commitments that you're going to put in. Because once we're out of the season and we get into our recruiting mo mode, we're on the phones, you know, four or five nights a week, uh, two to three hours a night recruiting, trying to draw kids, get them up here uh, during the, you know, the late fall, early winter, and all the way through the spring. So 
you know, that becomes difficult because, you know, at night when you want to spend time with your family, you know, you got to head back on the phone and, you know, try to put the kids to bed since I've, you know, my kids are younger, they go to bed a little bit earlier. So, you know, it's just something that it, it's definitely, um, you know, you got to have the right mentality to be a football coach because it's, it's, it's never ending. It's always from one thing to another. Um, but again, you want to have a supportive family. You know, my wife and my kids go to all of our uh, football games, home and away. Oh, um, nice. my, my mother still goes to all the games as well. So, you know, I have a strong family support that uh, loves what I do. And, uh, you know, I try to get them to be involved in as much of my job as I can by having them, you know, go to my games and things like that. It just makes, makes my life a lot easier when I know that there's a sincere interest from my family with, with what I do. Marcus McCullough, thank you for joining us here this evening on One Man Show. And with folks like you and David Kalavig, who were on earlier in the show, I think the Spartans are in good hands for many years of success on the football gridiron. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Good luck to the Spartans. There is more of One Man Show coming up, so don't touch that remote. Marcus played college football at Bolin Wallace as an outside linebacker. Tonight, One Man Show originates from the campus of Case Western Reserve University. Our topic is Spartan football. Now our final guest this evening on One Man Show, Case Western Reserve University head football coach Greg Debelak. Now We are seated here at ground zero, as you can see behind us, of the new football stadium and facilities being built here on campus. And that has to be exciting for you, Greg. Well, it is something we're all looking forward to. It's a uh, long time coming. And uh, you know, when everything gets finished, we'll be really happy to be part of the you know, the, the community, uh, one of the reasons they decided to do it was now we finally have all undergraduates together on one side of campus before it was split, so, uh, and we'll be right in the middle of that, so we're pretty excited. Hey, this looks like no small undertaking either. Here, we'll get you on camera here, make sure everybody gets you framed up there. This looks like no small undertaking. Besides the football field, what else will be here on this site once it's completed? Well, there'll be seven dormitories, a parking garage, uh, and our football stadium will be in the middle, and there'll also be our baseball field, so it'll be quite a bit. Nice big coach's office, maybe with all the amenities? Uh, we're not sure. That's uh, <laughs> the details we don't know about. Well, I, I tell you, we're just happy to have something that uh, we can call our own. Nice. I know the players and probably the alumni have to be excited about this as well. Now, you served three years as an assistant or uh, associate coach to Joe Perella, who's moved on to, to Beachwood High School. And then you had 11 years at John Carroll as an assistant as well. When the changes came down here, I think it was in February, did you have a feeling that you might get the head coaching position here at Case? Yeah, I was pretty confident because um, you know part of the reason I came over was to become a head coach. And I wasn't promised anything, but I knew if I did my job that I would have a great shot at getting it. And things worked out. We're speaking with Greg Debelek, the head football coach at Case Western Reserve University. The noise and the dust and everything you see behind you is the construction of the brand new football facility here on campus. Coach, we spoke with uh, David Kalavig a moment ago. Um, as his offensive coordinator a year ago, how much will David factor into this year's team under your new regime as a head coach? Well, David will be the focus of what we do offensively. Uh, we graduated uh, almost all of our skilled kids wow. except Dave. Um, yeah. So he'll be a big part of what we do, and uh, we're really trying to find ways to get him the ball. Uh, we're going to have a young quarterback and a young running back, uh, so Dave's really the, the go-to guy. Hey, let's talk about the quarterback for a minute. Eli Grant is gone. How hard is it to replace a talent like him, all-American type skills? And what's Eli doing these days? You know, Eli is actually, uh, he's around in the Cleveland area, and I'm fortunate enough he's going to be our quarterback coach this year. So right. that should really help a lot. He's got a great mind for the game, and, you know, it's going to be very difficult to replace him. And we're not looking to do the same things with our new quarterback. We don't know who that will be. We're just trying to build a, an offense that will take advantage of his skills and not make him do what Eli did, because I don't think there's so many people who could do that. How exciting is it for you now to be head coach here at Case? Is it something that you had wanted as an assistant, as an associate head coach? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's why I made the move. Uh, you know, I always want, it's been my goal to be a college head coach. I've had some opportunities to go to high school. And, um, but I wanted to stay in college, and to be a head coach in Cleveland, um, you know, you couldn't ask for anything more. 
We're going to take a quick break here. You folks hang with us here. You know, you got to break a few eggs to make something nice. Again, the construction of the new football facility behind us here on the campus of Case Western Reserve University. A load of dirt. And given the progress that we see already here with the rebar and the concrete going up, Coach, I would imagine that after your last home game last season, all the work began, didn't it? It was probably something that started in earnest. Right. We After our last home game, we had a week to get everything out of our, our old building. Oh. And, uh, and they started, and they've been nonstop since then. So, You and I talked on the ride over here to the, to the site. Uh, there were a couple of holy name players from our viewing area that are on the team, but they've kind of succumbed to injuries, haven't they? Well, what John Simcoe is a junior, and he, he has a back problem where uh, his doctor suggested he take the year off to let that heal, and, and we're supporting that, and John's going to be in a, a student assistant for us to keep involved in the program. Uh, Mike Sesson is uh, a senior who's been in, uh, you know, an on and off starter, played all three years. He's lettered twice. Uh, it's his senior year, and, and he'll be a starting defensive lineman for us, barring injury. But I, Mike's, Mike's healthy right now and ready to go. And you and I were also chatting off Mike. Uh, Kyle Orban, Fairview Park graduate, a former quarterback. He's been out a couple of years, but he's managed to find a place with the team too, hasn't he? Right. Kyle uh, had a shoulder problem and, and just as a quarterback couldn't come back from that. Uh, so last year he volunteered to be our camera person and did it. Oh, uh, he's a great guy and we're, we're glad to have him around. Well, it sounds like with you know Eli helping out and, and Kyle running the camera, uh, it sounds like this football team here at Case Western Reserve University is more of a family. It is truly a team unit, even though you are young. You know, we talk about it all the time. I think the, the most important thing is to be a team, and um, it doesn't happen all the time. It, you know, it's different groups come together in different ways, and I really like the way this group has come together. We've only been a one day of practice, but just through meetings and the off offseason, um, they're a great group of kids, and I'm not sure, you know, how that's going to correspond to you know, points or wins and losses, but uh, I think we're, we're starting to build a, a nice program a, a, you know, with, with a lot of great people. I'm certainly excited that you were able to tune in this evening to One Man Show. I'm flanked here by Greg Debelek, the head football coach at Cade Western Reserve University. Behind me, the construction of the new football facility and the fields here on the grounds and the campus of Case Western. Now, a lot of us that are out there both watching and at home, uh, we're somehow involved with youth sports, whether it's, you know, girls soccer, uh, Little League Baseball. As a coach yourself, we talked about team and family and the unity of players a minute ago. What is the key to anybody out there that might be a youth coach or a coach in general of any sport to bring a group of players together, boys and girls, what have you, to play as a team? What are some of the first things you have to do? Well, uh, I think the first thing is to let them know that, you know, that they have to be they have to play for their for their teammate. You know, you can't be selfish. You, your motivations can't be about yourself. They have to be about the team, and you have to stress how important it is to care about one another um, and be generally concerned for for their teammate and do whatever they can to help them uh, on and off the field. Um, I think if you have that kind of feeling, you know, that kind of family feeling, um, a lot of great things can happen. Excellent. Our final guest here this evening, Greg Debelek, the head men's football coach at Case Western Reserve. You know, oh, got to give me a high five. All right. That'll take us back. I hope you'll join us next week for another edition of One Man Show. I called Dave Dan, but other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> he was quick to correct me.